My name is Norm Vujovic. I'm a class of 2002, and I'm a criminal intelligence analyst for Chicago Police Department. When I started working here, I wasn't sure what to expect. I came from the Air Force and then was working for Homeland Security at the federal level. Very similar type organizations. Um, federal laws are different from local. Uh, got to work cases across the board. Uh, worked on cases from San Bernardino to uh, terrorist things in France. If it was a big case in that time frame, um, after 2013 or so, I probably at least touched it for a second. I saw um, a newspaper article about this thing that the Chicago Police Department was trying to do. Basically, we're gonna put intelligence and smart policing, evidence-based policing, right in the hands of the district commanders uh, and accessible immediately to the officers in the field. I came to CPD and I had to learn a whole bunch of different municipal laws, but I knew what I had been able to do previously. So the Strategic Decision Support Centers, or SDSCs, the idea was first we're going to take uh, we're going to take this concept and we're going to put it in the worst districts in the city. Uh, those are called we refer to here as the tier one districts. They're the most violent, most dangerous uh, districts in the whole city. So the ninth district, or nine as we refer to it here. Um, is a challenging district. It's large. It's one of the largest districts in the city, and it's one of the largest, if not the largest, tier one district. And so a challenge is um, we have to cover this territory and we have to do it efficiently. Every day I come in here and I use the analysts and I have the officers that work the room looking at statistics, looking at patterns, looking at any type of, of factors that go into crime and disorder in the district. And then we begin you know, using that statistic to deploy our resources in a more focused effort in order to deter crime, solve crime, and get a situation where crime doesn't occur. The room functions almost in two different modes. There's a real-time mode and an analysis mode. Shot spotter alerts that there's gunfire at a certain location. In this sort of situation, time is very important. We'll get a shot spotter alert almost immediately after the event occurs. We'll look, we'll look on the cameras, verify it, maybe take some photos, and we can distribute that immediately to the cars in the field. Simultaneously, we're also collecting this data and we're able to use and analyze it later on for deployments. Um, on different days. My role is, um, as the analyst is I act as an advisor directly to our commander and he'll take his you know nearly 30 years of law enforcement experience and tell me what he thinks and I'll let him know based on what I'm seeing from intel from out in the field or from analysis based on numbers and we'll usually come to a conclusion about certain aspects uh, for how we should deploy. So we take this information intelligence from the field um, from people in the neighborhood, from informants, from what we're seeing, what we're measuring, and, and we try to figure out what's the best way to protect the neighborhood today. For us, it really is violence. You know, this is a district that has a tremendous amount of gang conflict. We have a lot of gangs within the district, and there's conflict between those gangs, historical conflict that goes back decades. And using this information to focus our efforts on those type of crimes has helped us to reduce the number of shootings and murders. When you focus on it on a day-to-day -day basis and then a week-to-week -week basis and a month-to-month -month basis, in the end, your numbers start to come down as a whole. So there are, there are all kinds of uh, mission types that we'll, we'll try to implement um, to help the neighborhood. For example, the commander might go out and knock on a door and say, hi, uh, you know, I'm Commander Darlin from 9th District. Uh, we noticed that um, you're a gang member in such and such a gang, and you guys have been having an issue with this gang. We want you both to come into this community room here. We want to sit down and have a talk and see if we can work something out. Or if we identify someone as a particularly risky individual who's maybe not uh, working with gangs yet, but we notice they're starting to get more felonies, we'll tell the community uh, groups about it, and they'll go out and they'll knock on the door and say, hey, uh, the community's got programs, we can get you job training and all these other um, things. So uh, one of our roles here is to like sort of, uh, when we can identify this kind of activity and try to figure out what sort of mission will best impact uh, that behavior. Uh, what can we do about it? Because we don't always just want to go arrest somebody. What if we could go in and actually change someone's life for the better? Compared to last year and the year previous, especially in the district who stood up an SDSC room right away, uh, we've seen dramatic decreases in, uh, in violence and other crimes. Uh, in some cases, nearly 40%. We saw this 
steady rise from about 2013 into this terrifying peak around 2016. And now we've seen a dramatic drop back to nearly 2013 numbers. So it hasn't just gone up and floated back to where it was. It's, uh, it's rapidly dropped off. Um, and it hasn't necessarily done that in the districts that didn't implement the program. 911 calls have steadily increased since we've been doing the program. Not because violence is worse, it's gone down. But the calls are going up because the community is becoming more and more engaged. Uh, and they're starting to see results. For the first time in the city's history, the worst districts have been the drivers for the decline in violence. Where they've actually led the decline whereas normally they just trail, trail behind the rest of the districts. Since we started the SDSC strategy, we've seen a continuous reduction in gun violence, with 1,063 fewer victims of gun crime since we built these centers and implemented a Spartan policing model. Let me be clear, this is not a cause for celebration but a call for further action and investment into the tactics and models that we know are working. And you've seen over the last two years, we're after a very significant, one of the largest, unfortunately, upticks in the country in murders and shootings. Over these last two years, there has also begun a very significant decline. In my sense, based on what I saw here today, the briefings I've had, that you will continue to see further reductions overall in those two situations. Two years ago, I took the job because I thought I wanted to try something that could help. Two years later, I feel validated, and I, I think the whole team does. You've seen kind of this new renewed sense of hope. In some communities where you would never take the kids out to a park, that stuff's happening again. And when I look at the numbers and I see how many less people have died this year versus last year or the year before, um, I mean, that's something you can smile about before you, know, before you go to sleep at night. Am I doing it alone? No, no not at all. But uh, the community working together with the police department is definitely making an impact and driving it down. And so, um, so it's a good time to be here.